Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video I'm going to talk about one of the most important concepts, tools, and well really at some level it's a mindset that you can learn for system administration and that is configuration management. Now there's a bunch of tools that do this. You may have heard of some of them. Things like um, CF Engine, Puppet, Ansible, SaltStack, on and on and on. It's a popular concept, maybe something like, I don't know, it's really been used in a lot of places for the last five years or so, and it's only going to get more popular. So it's something you absolutely need to understand and know and just intuitively have a feeling for it. this is important and here's why. And I'm going to try to impart that in this video. So we're not going to talk about any specific configuration management tool in this video. I'm simply going to review what configuration management is, why it's important, and in practice how that actually looks and what changes when you start using it. So what is configuration management? Well, it's a way to manage configuration. I know, you're, I know this is revolutionary, but an example is probably going to make this easier to understand. So let's take a very simple example of configuring a web server. Fine, you want to configure a web server. What does that mean? Well, you're a brand new sysadmin and you're very proud of all your Linux knowledge. So you know the commands for installing packages. So you type those in and you use your package manager and you pass in some options and maybe you even build some packages. So you write a little script or something and you type in the commands to configure and compile your software. And then you edit some config files and you're very proud because now you know you know, what the Nginx config, what every little thing in there means and why you need it. You know how to restart services, you know how to load kernel modules, you know how to uh, change settings in the kernel. You know how to fiddle around and troubleshoot. And you know that you need to document. So you document as you go along and you sort of take notes. And as always, you document about 90% because something doesn't work. And then you go back and troubleshoot it, but you don't update the documentation. Or for some reason, you do something out of order. And so basically, that's how a noob configures a server. And that's completely fine. That's the first stage of configuring this stuff. So it's important to remember that in this case, one server takes x amount of time, let's say it's a couple hours, and two servers takes approximately 2x of that time. So if it takes you a couple hours the first time, it takes you the same couple of hours the next time, maybe a little bit less if you're in practice and you're really just churning these things out, but this basically scales linearly and that's kind of bad. So what's the next level of configuring a web server? Well, the let's say intermediate sysadmin would keep track of their shell history the first time. So what commands are you actually typing in? What changes are you making to config files? You would take those commands, paste them into a script. You would save the config files in their finished state and keep those. And then you would basically write a script that did all this stuff for you. One after the other, the commands that you typed in, maybe some basic conditional logic, like, hey, if installing this package worked, then do this. But you know, if it didn't work, return an error and stop. And that's fine because now you've kind of graduated to configuring a web server. And if you need to configure five of them at the same time, it's great because you can kind of do this in parallel. You, you still have no way of managing the servers once they're deployed. So you graduate to the sort of beginning of DevOps. You start idolizing images. So you say, well, here's what we'll do. We'll take a container or an image of some kind sort of closed system that we really control and where the system can be the same on the development machine and on the production machine. And we're going to make an image of that server in the state that we want it in. So it's configured. We can test it before we roll it out. And then when we roll it out, we simply clone that perfect golden image. And maybe after we clone that to the production machines, you maybe run some scripts or stuff to configure, you know, host name and those details that change for each machine at deployment time. And then you sort of hope that things pretty much stay cool on those machines. Maybe you have monitoring and some other stuff that'll alert you if things are going horribly wrong. But basically you're sort of like, well, this isn't really going to change. If something breaks horribly, we'll just blow it away and deploy a new image because it's easier than just troubleshooting and figuring stuff out. You just overwrite it with a new image. So the problem is when stuff changes, you obviously are creating a new base image each time. 
And then you slowly push it out to servers and batches and test things and then roll it out everywhere and pray and swear and troubleshoot and fix and then repeat that process a few times. And then it's an involved process. And then there is the fourth level, I promise this is the last one, and that's the one we're going to talk about here, and that's sort of the state of the art, let's say. And that is configuration management. The real abstraction that is new here, in the same way that it's revolutionary to just do stuff with scripts, so you can do 20 at a time instead of just one, the real revolution here is that you're configuring the state instead of the process by which things get to that state. So if your perfect state is, I have a web server running, serving this web page, break that state down into the components that make it up. So the state would be, these packages are installed. This configuration file looks exactly like this. And in that way, it's a little bit different because when you're scripting, you're not saying, this is how it is. You're mostly saying, do this process in this way hoping that that process gets you to the state that you want. The problem with that is sometimes doing a process can be only safe the first time. With one or a hundred servers, it's basically the same. You never need to really worry about this, and you have visibility that you don't really have with scripts. Um, you also have weird errors that you forgot to handle are going to be drastically reduced because you're not writing all this error handling code yourself. There's some intelligence in the configuration management tool to kind of handle a lot of these problems for you. And the most important thing, or one of the most important thing is it lets you manage the state once you've deployed. So when you've deployed that one or those thousand web servers that are all running your application, that's not the end of it. I mean, even with an image, that's sort of the end of it, and you have to roll your own monitoring tool or figure something out for that. But with a configuration management tool, that's where it really shines, is once it's automated this deployment process, you can keep an eye on how things are going, which means you can start asking questions like, oh, which servers are still running the old version of package you know, XYZ? Or on which servers has this config file been changed? Or if you're having some kind of security problem, you know, did the hacker add evil stuff in the web server config? Did, did the cron tab change? All this stuff is going to be, you're sort of, it's built in monitoring and alerting, basically. So as soon as your systems, for some reason, go out of your desired state, you're going to be notified, you're going to see that, and you're going to be able to just bring them back into line. This really just means you're not flying blind after you deploy anymore. So configuration management tools that's the kind of problem they solve. And I hope that gives you a practical, realistic view of like what is actually happening when these tools are running. So they do really th three main things. Automation, and we already have plenty of ways to automate stuff, but this is, for system engineering, this is a very, I would say, preferable way to do it. So it gives you a way to repeat tasks. The second thing is it gives you documentation. Scripts can be hard to follow. You know, people always end up writing spaghetti code, stuff changes, scripts grow and become these huge Frankenstein monsters. Documentation is amazing and it's important. And the nice thing is because configuration management tools generally force you to use a very small subset of whatever programming language they're written in, and they force you to do things in a very simple and straightforward way, they don't let you be too clever about things. That's limiting sometimes, but it really forces you to basically always have documentation because the process itself, the configuration scripts, I guess, themselves are the documentation because they're sort of so obvious and straightforward 99% of the time. So when you need to like show someone how a process works, you just say, well, read the Ansible docs or, uh, sorry, the Ansible playbook or the puppet script for it, the manifest. So you can just look these things up very easily. And it really gives you just sort of, you know, as opposed to a script, which is always just sort of a step-by-step -step process, this is sort of one abstraction higher where you're really talking about not how to configure this annoying server to be the way that you want to run the app, but what does it actually mean that the app is running? Well, it means that these services are running and these packages are installed and these libraries are here and these config files are here and these keys are in 
SSH authorized keys, on and on. So that's automation and documentation. And the third thing is enforcement. You can see what's changed and enforce compliance, which means, and especially for large deployments, this is always an issue, you don't have any stragglers anymore. It's a huge problem. So when you're running like a thousand servers or containers, you don't have these stragglers that are like, oh, that's the config from six months ago. We don't do it that way anymore. Or, oh my God, I had no idea that this and this had changed or that these packages are outdated or what have you. So again, the problems that it really solves are, you know, system imaging, it's fine for a while, but then managing those systems is tough. And this gives you control way later in the process. So you have management, you reduce variance in large deployments. When you have a thousand servers, almost always you're going to have some using the old software, some using the new software and configs, some are vulnerable to this attack, some are not. The other uh, problem is that occasionally running the same script twice can destroy your whole world or your server. There's always bugs, there's always weirdness. Once you remove something, if you try to remove it again, you forgot to quote, you're suddenly deleting root or what have you. It, it's never perfect. Your scripts are never perfect. They're always a little bit buggy and you have just a much better chance of configuration management scripts, I'll call them, being idempotent, having the same effect no matter how many times you run them. If they don't need to make a change, they won't make a change because it's already in the state that you're trying to get to. So it just makes things a little bit safer. I mean, we're talking about a lot of things that are important to sysadmins in large companies, but this is actually really cool for small sysadmins too. So this is not just a skill you need to like memorize for when you are in a huge company for the first time. Uh, one of the things I've noticed, like especially when I was starting, when I was a sysadmin at a small company, you always have the documentation shuffle, right? Let's say I got like two sysadmins, stuff changes, you troubleshoot stuff, you fix stuff, the docs just get stale. They're not always updated. No matter, like, even if everyone agrees that documentation is very important, they, they always get stale. And then when you give them to the new guy, he sets the thing up wrong. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's like a super special case. You just got to remember, always do this thing first and blah, blah, blah. It sucks. Your documentation is wrong in that case. And it's almost the case everywhere. The other thing is you obviously forget how you did stuff. Since you're not deploying 10 or 15 servers or containers or whatever a day, like you are at a large company, let's say, it's just much easier to forget the process that you use to get somewhere because it always involves a little troubleshooting to get things working and blah, blah, blah. And in this way, if the, thi if the deployment works, then all the documentation you need is right in there. And it's always up to date because your documentation and your code are the same thing. It's super important. Your documentation and your code, in this case, are the same thing. Okay, so that is a very basic overview of what configuration management is, what it actually solves, the actual problems it solves. That said, we're going to dive uh, into it a little bit more in the next video.